Hi YouTube, you might have seen some of my other videos on breeding jungle nymph stick insects. This video is going to be about the nymphs when they hatch. So this is how I was keeping my eggs. So this is just in some coconut fibre and the coconut fibre is kept very moist and you can see here, look in the tub, um, the tub is very moist as well. There are a few air holes in the side of this but a, a lot of condensation is allowed to build up on the top. Um, these incidentally are some leaf insect eggs from the giant leaf insects um, and I'll just show you these as well because I keep these um, slightly uh, differently so I just keep them on damp sand but again really humid, uh, lots of moisture on the side here um, same kind of thing with just a few air holes on the edges and then the condensation really builds up on the top it just keeps them really humid, stops them drying out um, and then all of these are in a cage uh, which is actually where I keep my blood pythons um, so the whole cage is a little bit humid um, you can see in there's the um, tub where the blood pythons are that's their sort of nest box uh, and then they come out and they wander around in this really long cage um, but there's heat cables running underneath all of this as well so it keeps the whole cage at a constant temperature nice and warm for the eggs okay so last season I got 133 eggs from my jungle nymphs um, and they've just started hatching and I'll show you the nymphs in a minute but this is how I set the nymphs up so um, simple tub here and I've got some kitchen paper in the bottom um, this is the fresh bramble um, they do eat ivy as well but you've got to be careful because you can't feed them solely on ivy this time of year is quite difficult you can see here I've got um, water in this jar and some carrier bags on the top and the carrier bags have to be kind of pressed in so there are no gaps for your stick insects to go down otherwise they drown in the water um, but yeah getting bramble this time of year is a bit tricky so it's January at the moment in the UK and we've got um, some frost at the moment as well and quite often the bramble gets killed off by the frost I'm quite lucky in that I'm still getting some in my garden at the moment and uh, it's got reasonably good leaves and things on it so I'm fine for now I might have to resort to feeding them ivy for a little bit um, before the spring comes and then I can get more bramble again uh, as it starts growing but we shall see hopefully I can just carry on with the bramble because I think um, it's a much better food plant really a bit spiky and when you're pushing it in like this you do tend to get prickled a bit but it's part of it okay so then what I do is um, I spray all of this so I've got this big spray bottle and I just spray down everything with this so I start by spraying the leaves and I, I really give it a really good spray so it's really quite soaking wet um, I think the little stick insects are pretty good they don't um, tend to drown unless they're in like a sort of a small puddle of water um, you can see here I really spray the kitchen paper at the bottom as well you want your cage to be pretty humid I think one of the main problems with little nymphs and things is if they're kept too dry when they try and shed their skins they can have like a bad molt they don't shed very well so try and keep everything yeah nice and um, moist you can see a load of the nymphs here on the cage lid and what I do is um, the ones that are on the lid I just leave them basically um, they tend to kind of sleep I think or rest up during the day and then they um, more sort of feed at night so these are all the ones that I've got on the old bramble um, they're quite hard to see and I'll talk more about that later but can you see they form like little um, clusters quite often where they sort of rest on each other uh, I don't think that matters they don't nibble each other or anything as far as I can tell so far when you go to pick them off they quite often do this thing where they just lie on their back like this one is and they're sort of pretending to be dead um, you can see there even when I flipped it over it sort of flipped back again uh, like it's determined to pretend to be dead which is quite funny and then yeah look quite often as soon as you put them on the food plant they start wandering off they are a nice calm species though and you can handle them like this without them all running about and you losing them which is nice um, so I've probably had about 30 or 40 hatched so far and they tend to be hatching at about the rate of about three or four a day at the moment so we'll see 
how many I end up with. Hopefully I get all sort of 133 to hatch, that would be amazing. I am going to be overrun with them for a while. Uh, I'm in two minds whether to kind of um, sell off a load while they're at this tiny stage. Um, I'm a bit reluctant to do that just because they're more delicate like this. Um, you can see here where I'm trying to kind of pick it up. It it probably looks like I'm being quite rough, but I'm not. I'm being really, really gentle. Um, I hardly put any kind of pressure on them at all. Uh, you can see again, like playing dead on their back. Sometimes with these, I don't know if you notice, when I try and um, just grab it gently, it sort of tries to grip me with its back legs. And that is one of their kind of defense mechanisms. And at this stage, it's fine because it doesn't hurt or anything at all. But when they get a bit bigger, they've got spikes on their um, legs. And when they try and grip you with the, their legs, it can uh, hurt quite a bit, which is one of the reasons why they say this species isn't for kind of beginners or small children. Um, just for that reason, like you can occasionally, if you pick them up uh, and they feel a bit threatened, they can just give you a bit of a pinch with their back legs. Um, I, I either have them more as a sort of a hands-off species or if I do pick them up rather than trying to pick the adults up in the same way that I'm picking up the babies i.e. by sort of grasping them in the middle um, I tend more with the adults to kind of put my hand in front of them and then sort of nudge them with my other hand so they uh, walk from wherever they are up onto my hand and then they tend not to do the um, they don't feel as threatened and they don't spike you with their legs. Yeah, what I was saying about getting 133 to hatch, if if they all do hatch, um, whether or not to sell them at this stage, um, because it's January at the moment in the UK and is really quite cold, um, a lot of these I would be posting out to people. And it's very risky, obviously, if they're this small. You don't want them sort of dying in the post, obviously. So I think I am reluctant to do that. And I'd much rather I think rear these up um, so they become either large nymphs um, or even adults because I mean obviously you get more money for them as adults anyway um, they're just much more impressive but obviously when they are adults they're really quite hardy compared to how they are now so I'll probably do that I'll probably end up trying to keep as many as I can it just depends like how much space they end up needing if I do have that many adults I know you can keep quite a lot of them together, and I did in a really big tub. That was a good way of doing it. And uh, I keep the thorny stick insects as well. And those I, can, I really did keep in really large numbers. And they were fine all in together. So I'll probably try and do the same with this lot. If you haven't kept stick insects before and you're thinking about it, you probably are thinking that you should keep something basic to start with, like say the Indian stick insects. Um, you know, the really thin, small green ones that you get. Um, but I say don't, because they're nowhere near as impressive as a species like this. And I would say that these are just as easy to keep, really, as long as you can have some fresh bramble. Um, and, yeah, you might need a bigger tub, obviously, for these when they're adults. But these things, they get absolutely massive. I think they're sort of like um, second or third largest insect in the world. The females are bright green, and absolutely huge. The males are brown, they're not quite as impressive, but still are impressive. Um, right, I was just going to show you here um, that when you come to clean out your stick insects, when they're nymphs like this, can you see this bit of um, twig here? It looks a bit like one. Um, and then you've got this one here, which actually is one. So they do camouflage in really well with the bits of bramble, and you've got to be so careful because you could very easily think you've got them all and then end up throwing some of them away with the old bramble. If you have a look here, there's one look, this is a good example, this one is resting right along the stem of this um, bit of bramble here and it really camouflages in really well so yeah it's worth when you're getting rid of your sort of old leaves just go through and literally just snip off little bits with some secateurs just keep removing little bits and double checking everything to make sure you've got them all. You could, like I say, very easily accidentally throw some away. <laughs> Quite often they end up resting in these sort of um, ends of branches as well. That's a really good place to look for them. Um, yeah, just really keep your eyes open. 
Right, once you're transferring them onto their new food plant, it doesn't matter if you sort of bunch them all up and if they're all on top of each other because you put them in and they're sort of a bit shy at first and they remain really still, but they soon kind of disperse outwards from this. So you can see I've got a whole load of them all in together. Um, I tend to, once they're all in, just give them one final quick spray and that actually allows them to kind of drink as well. So in the wild, they just drink from water droplets, like rain droplets on leaves and things. So this is a, another reason why you have to spray them, because uh, they do get the moisture from the leaves, and probably that would be enough, but they do like to have a little drink as well. And that is why I spray the ones on the lid as well. So all of these ones, I give them a quick spray, and that just means they can uh, have a little quick drink from the lid as well. These ones that are on the lid, yeah, I won't disturb them. I won't try and pull them off and put them onto the plant. Because they feed at night, I'll just uh, add this lid back on as it is. Just got to make sure that you're really careful with their legs. So here, look, the ones that are right on the edge, I just kind of nudge them in a little bit so that I'm not going to trap their legs when I put the lid back on. So this lid has got lots of uh, ventilation holes in it, as you can see which is fine because of the way that I keep them, I'll show you in a minute. But you do want to keep them nice and humid, so that's my reason for kind of spraying the kitchen paper on the bottom of their cage. Um, but all of this uh, tub as well, in a second, I actually put it into uh, one of my other enclosures, which has got uh, some damp kind of coconut fibre bedding in the bottom of it. So it means that there's humidity all the way around this as well. It doesn't matter, I mean you could keep them just like this and you could keep them out in the room. Um, but if you do that, because the lid is so ventilated, I think you would need to just keep spraying them like a, probably a couple of times every day. Whereas what I do is I spray this big cage and the bottom where all the sort of coconut fibre is, I really spray that. So loads of spray, so that remains actually quite wet and then I'll put the um, tub into this and the whole thing remains humid and it just means that I'm not having to spray the stick insects um, daily. I can probably get away with spraying them like every few days. So incidentally I'm keeping some crested geckos in this cage as well which is why I've put this little water dish in and a little tub with some um, banana in. Um, here's a couple of crested geckos. So this one just hides in here in the leaves and then there's another one actually at the top here just wedged in um, and there's another gecko in there somewhere as well all hiding so what I do is I, I put this big tub in and because the uh, crested geckos live up in trees and things they climb on things all the time so they don't mind actually just uh, creeping in in behind here looking at all the plants and things they hide in there and they can actually climb all over the tub and everything as well so it doesn't matter it being in with them at all, it doesn't bother them, they just uh, use it as something extra to climb on. There's a heat mat underneath that cage as well. Right, I'll leave you with some close-ups of these nymphs, uh, just in some sunshine. I don't think they really like the sunshine particularly, but I'll just um, do this quick video and then I'll put them back where they were. It's quite nice to be able to see them in a bit more detail, isn't it? Um, so most of them are this sort of... Uh, drab brown colour at the moment. There's a few nice ones with sort of lighter patches and I'll just show you in a second uh, my sort of favourite one that I've got at the moment. I remember like when I bought my nymphs last year one or two of them were really quite pretty compared to the rest so I'm hoping that I get a few more of the really interestingly marked ones come out as well. Okay, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe to see any videos that I post in the future and I'll catch you in the next video.